we're closed, but I'll show you around. Make yourselves at home. So this was a Salvation Army Chapel built in about the 1920s. And of course, the thing that it offers us is the magic ingredient that goes with glass. Glass without light equals horrible. Glass with light equals Crystal Palace. And so 15 years on, we've made ourselves home here. This is, well, it's Britain's largest glass shop, and we cover the lot. It's called Glass Etc, Antiques and High Class Junk. And we are what it says on the tin. We're kind of a high class junk shop. And we try to do a bit of everything. I mean, there's nothing, the most expensive thing in this shop is probably 300 quid. And we're unpretentious, and we want people to get their hands on. That's what it's about. So, yeah, we've got a lot, really. A lot of Swedish, antique, vintage. The lot that, I would say that the majority of the glass in this shop is younger than me. And so, antique is a pretty elastic word. We've got dessert glasses. Glasses that big. Well, that may be all right for the in-laws, but I keep mine over here. There's my wine glass. Sante! Yeah, liqueurs, port, highballs, sherry, shots, lemonade, you name it, we got a glass for it. And through here's the gallery. So we're here by the south coast of England. The sea is about a mile over there. And we get the air and we get the light. And look at the result. God loves it. And it's just this nice little gear change moment in here between the hands-on gallery and the kind of more private one. It wouldn't be fair to say that we this is the best stuff because there's fairly cheap gear in here, but we can't survey it, so it's in cabinets, and so that's the reason for this. So here on this side is mostly Swedish glass, bit of British there, but mostly that's almost all Swedish and Finnish. On this side, glass animals. I mean, there's some really useful stuff in here. I mean, who could possibly live without a, a glass hippo? Or glass hedgehog. Absolutely must have, isn't it? Then around here is White Friars, the British Glass Works. They closed in 1980, but when it closed, it was the longest established British Glass Works, founded in the 18th century. And um, it's Geoffrey Baxter, the famous designer. That's the most expensive piece in the shop. 335 quid TV vase in tangerine, good color. Here we have antiques. So you've got, well, it's mostly antiques in here. But again, most expensive thing, 26, 98, 110 quid. Decanter, blue decanter at the back. 100 quid. And here, Swedish again. Um, thing about uh, Swedish glass is that I've basically been an antique dealer. Antique glass had been my thing for years, selling in Germany. But then, in 2004, I got a call from Millers saying, would you do a book on 20th century glass? Well, my knowledge of that subject could have been put into a, an ant's nostril. I knew nothing about it. So as a trained journalist, what I did is I called all the glass, all the main glassworks in the world and said, can I come and see you? So walked into these glassworks in Sweden, Boda, Orforsch, uh, Costa, 
and m the scales fell from my eyes. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. I, I, colour, diversity, quality, bam, bam, bam. And not to mention the fact these guys are still alive. Uh, Bertie Valin, alive. Joran Wolf, alive. Um, and so on. Shell Engman, alive. So one could actually go and talk to these guys about their work, and women. And then, as the kind of denouement of it all, I went to Denmark and end up at Home Guard, where <laughs> I saw these for the first time and the scales fell from my eyes. 20th century glass was a revelation and frankly it forms the majority of what we sell in our shop. And I think these are amazing. And the person who bought them all from us bought an entire set, Alexander McQueen, one of my favorite customers we had and he bought a complete set of those. And anybody who tells me he needs his eyes tested, it's wrong. They're wonderful things, as indeed is our shop. Come and visit us, please.